Hi everyone, people of YouTube, welcome back to a brand new Francis Studios video. And in today's video we're gonna create high voltage using a flyback transformer configuration. We're gonna look at the basic principles and also we're gonna build one for our experimental purposes. But first, I have to make a disclaimer. If you are playing with high voltages, it can be very dangerous or even fatal. So if you're following along, you do it at your own risk. Never play with high voltages unless you know exactly what you're doing, and of course only at your own risk. At high voltages even a couple of milliamps can be lethal, it can stop your heart, and that's no fun, so you have been warned. After I scared off everyone with the serious disclaimer, let's talk about the flyback transformers. One of the most common household usage was for a flyback transformer is in the CRT television sets. These bad boys were pretty common a couple of years ago, maybe 10-15 uh, years ago. Oh my, I'm getting old. But yeah, these flyback transformers transform the input 12 or 24 volts into 15 to 25,000 volts. And this is what power the electron can, so the electron beam can build up and hit the phosphorus on the screen. So this part is the flyback transformer, and all these RC circuitry around it to support and stabilize. This is one of the reasons why you never want to take apart a CRT equipment. It's filled with heavy duty capacitors, and it can hold a serious voltage and dampers too. So if you don't know what you're looking at, and what you're doing, please never attempt to do such things. And even if you do, it is still very dangerous. But alright alright, I stop being your mum and cry about everything. Let's fire up this puppy. If you still remember this nauseating high pitch noise, it's coming from the flyback transformer coils at least most of it. Sorry there's no image even though the CRT is on, because uh, I built this circuit 5-10 uh, years ago, and I disconnected the deflection coils, and I was controlling everything with this circuit. Let me find an archived record of this, I believe I have it somewhere on my uh, backup hard drive. Sorry for the recording quality, it was almost a decade ago and I had no intentions to put it on YouTube or anywhere, but here it is. And also if you know or have played with EL wires, you know that these little battery holders contain a flyback transformer that transforms the two AA batteries to around the 50 to 200-ish volts. And that is exactly our plans for today. My plan is to power these beautiful neon-filled bulbs which walk around 50 to 200, 300 volts and demonstrate the high voltage output. To understand flyback transformers, let's understand simple transformers first. The simplest of transformers are constructed by two coils close to each other with different number of windings. If the number of windings on the primary side matches the secondary side, we are talking about an isolation transformer. But in our case we want to transform a low voltage to a high voltage, so the number of windings can't match. So the way transformers work, the ratio between the primary and the secondary side determines the voltage transformation, the voltage on the primary and the voltage on the secondary. And since there is no free lunch in physics, as they say, the ratio for the current is inverted, so the power stay consistent. And let's see how all of this works. The coils are wrapped around an iron core, and that magnifies the effect and increases the efficiency of the transformer. Let's say I connect the primary winding to a DC power source, and that will charge up the coil, as well as will create a magnetic flux in the iron core. 
But aside from a momentary voltage spike on the secondary coil, there is no transformation yet. So then I disconnect my power source, let me erase the cable here. And the previously built up electromagnetic field will collapse through the secondary winding, creating a higher voltage as the secondary coil has much larger number of turns than the primary. It works just like every generator. If there is a changing magnetic field, the build-up and the collapse cycle will create voltage spikes on the output. So let's have some fun. I have this uh, very beautiful 230 to 6 volt mains transformer that is normally used for transforming 230 volt AC European grass fed wall power to 6 volt DC on the output. But for my flyback configuration, I'm gonna turn it around and I will use 6 volt to create 230. There is not much needed for this experiment, the transformer itself, a battery and a, a switch, which I'm gonna use to switch the input 6 or 9 volts around. And the output load will be this very beautiful high voltage neon bulb, which works from 50 to 100, 110 voltage or something like that. By the way, these are the bulbs you can find in your power bars switch. Alright, let's quickly wire up everything and uh, ready to test. As you can see, the generated voltage spikes are able to turn on the neon bulb. Let's put a little bit bigger load to the test. I have this uh, 230 volt. Uh, LED light bar and let's try to turn it on with our flyback transformer and as you can see the LED is flashing and if I turn it faster it will be more consistent and yes sort of works but you can switch around the tumbler switch fast enough to have a useful output and yeah, who in the right mind wanna switch uh, switch like kilohertz speed? Uh, <laughs> so I'm gonna build a circuit that will do it for me. I will use the NE555 timer I see in an A-stable mode operation. If you wanna know how it works, check out one of my previous videos where I've talked about this particular I see in depth and you can check out how the A-stable mode works. But this video is about flyback transformers, so I'm not gonna go in details how the A-stable mode works. I will just build it and control the input low voltage with it, so we can see a higher output. Here the A-stable 555 circuit is done, and I'm gonna control the battery voltage with this MOSFET. And let's put it on to the breadboard and connect the output to the gate and just wire up the battery accordingly. And here it goes. We have a bigger voltage on the blue LED than on the white LED at the same frequency. The A-stable mode NE555 timer circuit is controlling the MOSFET, opening and closing, letting through the whole battery voltage on the blue LED and of course the current limiting resistor. And what if instead of letting through the battery voltage on the LED diode, I let it through the coil of my transformer? We can see how the neon bulb turns on as the electromagnetic field will build up and break down in the coils. Let's increase the frequency so we have a more stable output. Almost it. 
and uh, that's it. You can see it's not flashing anymore, it's pretty stable. And let's measure a voltage, and we get around 68.3, 68.4 watts, and uh, you must note that this is not accurate, since uh, the output power is pretty low, so even a small load like this will significantly drop the output voltage. So without a neon bulb it should be around 100 or so. Yeah, here I changed my uh, A-stable circuit to a microcontroller because there were too much junk on the screen and uh, you can see it better here. You can use any kind of uh, frequency generation, even a button as you saw in my previous demonstration. <laughs> You have to just switch the power supply to have a larger output. And for this last bit let's check out the circuit that I've built on this circuit diagram. I have an N-channel MOSFET, I'm using the IRFZ44N and I'm letting through somewhere around 6 to 9 watts, does not matter. And I'm opening and closing the gate with a 2 volt output on the microcontroller or the NE555 circuit and I'm having these two resistors strictly for protection so the breakdown voltage or the rush current won't destroy my IC but we will discuss this topic later in another video that I will dedicate to MOSFETs but for this you just have to know that it belongs to the MOSFET control and so this MOSFET is acting as a switch letting through the battery voltage on the transformer whenever our control circuit opens the gate. And when the gate is closed, the battery voltage will break down on the primary coil and transform into the secondary coil. And here we have the load as a neon light and a resistor. And so let's improve the circuit a little bit. I put a non-polarized, smaller value, quick uh, capacitor on the primary coil. This will stabilize the supply. And the diode on the secondary side, so we have a directional flow. And also a polarized, little bit bigger capacitor to smooth out any discrepancies in the power. And this is it, a little bit optimized, but still pretty simplistic circuit that will generate a high voltage output. And yeah, lastly, be very careful disconnecting the secondary side load because the EM field will break down on the primary coil and can destroy your components that side. So if you're planning a very dynamic uh, switching circuit on the secondary side, plan ahead with an escape route on the primary and some synchronization between the secondary switching and the primary escape route. But yeah, that would be a more advanced topic for our next episode maybe. This was Electronics Basics. Don't forget to like and subscribe. That would support this channel hugely. And of course, thank you for watching. Francis signs out. Have a very wonderful day.